May I come in, sir? Come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning sir. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Are you vaccinated? Yes. Sir. We are also vaccinated. You can remove your mask. Yes. Please uh, introduce yourself to the board, highlighting your educational, work experience, and family background. Sir, I am Akshay Pillai, 26 years old, from Raipur, Chhattisgarh. I did most of my schooling in the Rajkumar College, Raipur. Thereafter, I pursued a B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from the National Institute of Technology, Raipur, graduating in 2017. Sir, I do not have any work experience and uh, family background, sir. Both my parents are civil servants. Okay, you did your graduation in Mechanical Engineering. and then opted to join the civil service instead of pursuing your career in the core field yes why so the reason is the civil services offer a broader canvas on which one can work and in the core services certainly one can contribute to development but the civil services allow one to contribute more directly to national development okay akshay uh, you must uh, because both your father and mother are civil servants you must have seen the functioning of uh, and the role of civil servants in the country for a, from very close quarters the perception is that bureaucracy has a disproportionately larger share of crooks than any other uh, vocation or any other field or other profession in india is it is that perception correct sir i think it is only correct to some extent because it is true for the common citizen who comes in contact with all levels of the bureaucracy there is some corruption and the view is shaped their view is shaped by that corruption however sir i do not agree that the bureaucracy is the service or that vocation which has the most because there are some people who lack integrity in all fields okay but there is another related perception that uh, reforming indian bureaucracy is a mission impossible because of the obdurate uh, nature of bureaucracy rule obsessed bureaucracy it becomes very difficult to reform indian bureaucracy you must have been discussing with your parents to understand the intricacies of working is it true sir uh, in some cases it is true that the need to follow procedures rules and the hierarchical system does lead to some difficulty in reform i feel though sir at the same time steps have been taken to improve the functioning of the bureaucracy earlier the bureaucracy was mainly a regulator now it has become a facilitator particularly when it comes to encouraging industry and to providing public services to citizens in recent times sir more reforms have been taken for example there is the emphasis on sit- responsiveness of bureaucracy through citizens charters capacity building of civil servants they are encouraged to be innovative so i think reform is possible sir even though it may take some time there is a related question of late uh, what we have been observing that lot many career bureaucrats they quit their service to join politics how do you explain this phenomena sir i think those who quit may feel that in politics they will be able to wield greater power and effect greater change that could be the positive side at the same time sir there is also a risk that a particular bureaucrat who is who gets a party's nomination may have done some favors or may have a well cozy relationship that risk is there in when bureaucrats quit to join politics so some remedial measures are needed why most of the politicians politicians children don't uh, want to join the bureaucracy sir it could be that if their parents have have done well have effectively served then they have built up some political capital and when their parents retire from active politics then that political capital can be utilized by their children giving them a head start so it's all uh, about a power game in the country Yes. Sir. Thank you. Akshay, you good? Yes. Continuing this conversation, uh, this uh, uh, families of uh, bureaucrats earlier used to have their children in bureaucracy to a large extent. 
this uh, trend is fast diminishing. Not many uh, children are now uh, either choosing or are able to crack uh, the examination. And uh, so, this bureau, families of civil servants uh, going generations uh, is reducing. Do you agree? Sir, in some cases it is true that children of civil servants are pursuing other professions. And maybe, sir, this is because nowadays in the post liberalized India, there are economic opportunities available apart from the good jobs available apart from the civil services too, which may not have been the case earlier. But in some cases, sir, children of civil servants are also choosing to pursue this. So I think it depends upon capability and interest too. Okay. Uh, you, most of your life, you have lived in uh, uh, Raipur. Yes. Sir. Right? Yes. Uh, Tell me, what are the districts in Raipur Division? So, the districts are Raipur, Mahasamund, Rajim, Garyaband. Sorry, sir, I cannot recall anymore. Sure? Uh, yes. Give me the administrative structure as far as the police administration is concerned in Chhattisgarh. Sir, at the apex level, there is a director general of police who is in charge of oversight of the entire police structure. And, sir, the different departments within the police, for example, anti-naxal operations, prisons and so on are headed by either director generals or additional director generals. Below them, sir, there are inspector generals, DIGs. At the district level, there's the superintendent of police and under the SPs, the DSPs and the SHOs. So, there is no division as such when it comes to police administration and there is division when it comes to ad uh, the administrative structure uh, of general administration. Is that true? So, there is a division in the sense that there are those departments. Who heads, I mean, what is the jurisdiction of DIC? Sir, uh, usually they are, ta they are posted to a particular department like uh, there is a DIG intelligence. And so, all of them are in headquarters. They are not uh, posted in a group of, uh, for a group of districts. No, sir. I, there, is an, there are IGs for the divisions, for okay. like for Raipur division. Buster division. We do generally see there is a sync when it comes to the revenue department and uh, the police department. But that's not applicable to the other, all other departments necessarily. For example, there can be uh, the, the health uh, administration which may not be uh, in sync with the, uh, or say the agriculture divisions not necessarily uh, in sync with the revenue divisions uh, in certain, uh, certain states. Uh, do you believe that uh, the uh, administrative structure uh, actually needs some kind of a reform so that uh, either all of them are in sync with each other or uh, maybe uh, um, none of them should be? Sir, I think there is a need for better coordination between them, between these departments whose functions overlap at times. So maybe working groups can be formed and they should be uh, tasked with meeting more regularly so that they are aware of the overlapping responsibilities they have to fulfill, the synergy. I think, sir, forming working groups could be an effective way. You were trained as mechanical engineer. Yes, sir. Right? Uh, if you look at the uh, electrical mobility, that's been uh, the word word nowadays. And we, it seems that uh, sooner or later, the IC engine going to be replaced by uh, electrical motors. Yes. How will it affect the, uh, for example, the transmission and the gear uh, trail aspect uh, of uh, engine? Sorry, sir, I do not. You got my question? Yes, sir, but I do not know about this. Sorry, sir. In electrical mobility, which uh, motors are used? Sorry, sir, I do not know. Not aware. You are happy with IC engines? Sir, not fully because they are, there is the pollution aspect and the... No, I want to know you are, you are happy discussing IC engines or not? You studied IC engines or not? So I studied. What is, when we say the motorcycle is of 125cc, what is 125cc here? So, 125cc means it's the 125 centimeters cube, it's the cubic capacity of, of? the, sort of the piston, of the cylinder. So, you, we, we take the volume of the entire cylinder to measure this volume or it is only the stroke volume or it is some, something else? Sir, so it is the stroke volume, sir. What is stroke volume? So, stroke volume is the distance that is travelled between the piston between two successive reversals. If it is distance, how can it be volume? Uh, sir, uh, distance is linear. Volume is, you yes. know, volume. How do we operate uh, the uh, valves within IC engine? Sir, they are operated by pressure difference. 
please enlighten me i'm i'm, I'm all ears sir as far as i'm aware when there is a reduction in the cylinder pressure when the wall gets sucked so gas is sucked through the wall that's true i'm saying how the walls are operated so there is some mechanical element but i'm not able to recall right what? now you took mechanical engineering as your optional right? yes sir right what is the difference between a crankshaft and a camshaft sorry sir i don't know what is cam do you remember yes sir it is a mechanical member it is part of a cam follower system it's used to transmit desired motion to a follower anyways thank you sir akshay assume that uh, president rule has been imposed in chatisgarh and you are the chief secretary yes so basically president would be walking through you actually real power would be exercised by you so what kind of changes would you like to bring in chatisgarh given the entire power to govern it sir one change i would like to make is focus on greater focus on poverty alleviation because the state has one of the highest bpl percentage populations in the country so utilization of the resources are, that are available for building human capabilities particularly in education and healthcare which will help improve the skill development another change i would like to make sir is in the infrastructure related aspect because chatisgarh has a location geographical advantage it is in the center nearly in the center of the country but greater investment in infrastructure is needed for industrialization and the third change i would make sir is for the left wing extremism affected districts a lot has been done on the security front to cut curb the activities but on the development front more effort is needed to win the hearts and minds of people so i would focus on ensuring that work done by the administration the development front is better delivered better publicized so that the perception of the government in those left wing extremism affected districts also changes that's good correct uh, okay uh, akshay uh, how do you define a common market do we have a common market in india for all the goods and services sir a common market is an economic market it's a it's a common market is where there are no tariffs to flow movement of goods and services and sir in india i think with the introduction of gst progress has been made towards a common market but i don't uh, believe it is there completely and how do you distinguish it with single market that is what is the difference between a common market and a single market sorry sir i don't know you know okay uh, what do you understand by capex sir capex is capital expenditure on assets permanent fixed assets for example roads bridges buildings so capex is useful because it helps sustain production in the future it gives a boost to industrialization and it is considered a better long term investment than revenue expenditure okay. finance minister also used a phrase which is very popular in the economic discipline uh, multiplier effect of capex what do you understand by multiplier effect sir i think it refers to how a certain sum that is invested as capex will have benefits that go beyond the immediate for example sir if money is allocated for uh, building a bridge then that is one benefit that will accrue but because of that there will be an impetus to the tourism industry to the hosp- hospitality and travel industry in the state so the multiplier effect will be that more jobs are created than would have been by just that investment by the government okay as you mentioned tourism chatisgarh is well placed it is having lots of natural beauty and there are so many sites available what measures are being taken by the government to promote uh, natural tourism in chatisgarh sir natural tourism sites are all mostly concentrated in the tribal majority districts so the government applied and got permission for a tribal tourism circuit under swadesh darshan scheme which covers six locations in the north and south where there is uh, emphasis on building accommodation providing last mile connectivity and sir another thing that is being done is better branding and marketing of the Uh, natural tourism sites through the credible chatisgarh camp which are those six points you mentioned sir in the north they are jashpur kunkuri in the south sir they are 
Jagdalpur, Bastar, and sorry, sir, I'm not able to recall the others. Okay, never mind, sir. Thank you. Hello. Akash, you were talking about the tribal tourism just now. Yes, sir. And you told that uh, government got certificate for uh, circuits over there, and uh, now you can have actually have tribal homestay in uh, some of the pockets of Chhattisgarh. Yes, sir. Don't you think we as a nation are failing tribals, have failed them enough and now we are kind of invading, uh, uh, you know, uh, their uh, way of life and uh, what they cherished most about themselves was their traditions and way of life which was very different from uh, other societies of India. Don't you think it's an invasion on this? Ma'am, if these efforts are without the consent or without taking their desires into consideration, then I agree. You know how these uh, consents are taken from marginalized population? Ma'am, in some cases, there have been allegations that consent is being coerced. But I think that wherever the district state and the district administration are sincere regarding obtaining consent, I think the tribals will indeed decide. They will evaluate themselves based on the benefit and the uh, limitations. So, I think ma'am it's possible to strike a balance. Between Is it really? Have we may been able to strike a balance when it comes to development of, uh, you know, industrial development and their uh, right to live? Ma'am, in the past, it has been one-sided. Their tribals did face displacement. And now, first we drove them out of their homes. Now we are going to stay in their homes. I, I don't see uh, a balance coming in. I feel that we are wronging them again, all over again. Ma'am, I beg to differ. I feel that earlier certainly they were wronged, but now there are more concrete legal guarantees like the Forest Rights Act, the Panchayat Extension to Scheduled Areas Act, the Gram Sabha's consent has to be taken for before land is acquired. So, yes, mistakes have been made in the past, but there's scope to improve in the future. Okay, uh, with respect to Jagdalpur, can can you tell me uh, the major tribes in the area? Ma'am, Pahadi Korwa is one. I mm -hmm. do not know the others. Uh, any tribal schemes of Chhattisgarh government? Ma'am, there's a scheme to eradicate malnutrition in the tribal districts of southern Chhattisgarh. So here, in addition to the other entitlements, food security entitlements, the government gives one hot cooked meal to the, all the children under six years and the pregnant women and uh, their nutritional parameters are monitored. Okay. India is going to launch uh, two significant missions this year. One is to moon, other is to sun. Can you name them? And their launch dates, tentative launch dates maybe? Ma'am, the moon maybe is Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2? We are long over Chandrayaan 2. Uh, Ma'am, the solar one is Aditya. Just Aditya, what's the complete name? Uh, sorry ma'am, I cannot recall. Okay, my last question to you. Can you tell me something about Millet Mission of Chhattisgarh? Sorry ma'am, I don't know. Thank you, Akash. Akshay, uh, when is Constitution Day celebrated? So it's celebrated on 26 November. Okay, there has been a lot of talks uh, recently about this uh, making fundamental duties uh, like almost equal to fundamental rights. What is your view on this? Sir, on one hand, it's true that rights and duties go hand in hand, but for many of the fundamental duties that are listed in the Indian constitution are such that a citizen may follow any way and some are slightly vague. So I think rather than making the fundamental duties binding on citizens, it's more important to promote civic consciousness and to model desirable Do behavior. Do you think anything works in India without a penalty or a fine? For example, like uh, even for masks, until and unless the government came out with the heavy penalties, people were very cavalier about using masks. Sir, it's true that in some cases this coercion is needed, but in other cases, sir, for example, the... So, coercion for something good, yes. is it bad? Like if everybody follows, every Indian citizen follows the fundamental duties. Uh, I don't see any problem in uh, doing that even through coercive means? Sir, in this case, when, for example, wearing a mask, it's easy to identify and find the person. But like some of the fundamental duties, like the one related to scientific temper, which is slightly vague. 
so there sir i feel that even if coercive means are used it would be difficult to identify and well penalize there could be legal disputes right scientific temper uh, especially we have seen that among politicians it is very less so what to do about it suppose you are a bureaucrat somewhere and uh, you are uh, in a public gathering where your minister speaks something which is not scientifically correct and you have to speak after him how you will correct the misperception created by him Sir. will you try to correct him or you will let it go that people are wise enough sir ideally i would correct him but in this case since i am speaking just after him i cannot predict how he will react i feel in this situation he has already spoken he can only admon admonish you in private no afterwards yes sir so then i think i would try to correct try to correct him okay uh, if we talk about international relations then india has taken a neutral stance in the ukraine crisis yes sir right and uh, india has also abstained from voting on resolutions which were critical of russian action but uh, it is being seen that this is not neutral stance it is somehow india is acting in favor of russia only and as a uh, quid pro quo russia has offered discounted fuel to india do you agree with this so it is partially true that india has taken advantage of the opportunity that has arisen but sir to say that it is fully favoring russia i don't think that's true because india has been clear on one thing that is need for the violence to end and through negotiation engagement with the russian president and the ukrainian president india has tried to advance this particular goal so i think sir india's priority which is ending the conflict is clear and that is what its stance tries to achieve okay the us deputy national security advisor mr dalip singh he came to india and he said that those countries which are uh, diluting the sanctions imposed on russia they will have to face consequences so how should we take uh, this kind of thing is it a threat is it a friendly warning what is it sir i think it could be a warning because because the us is also aware how important india is as a partner so if we have to make a tough choice between supporting russia or going with the us so what should we do if these are the only two choices available so in this particular case yes so in this particular case i think india should continue with the current stance of supporting russia because india has to exercise autonomy in its foreign policy and the us has uh, the US deputy nsa did say that but india should exercise independence in its terms okay thank you sir akshay whenever uh, we talk of ultra modern transport system in india a few transport systems like metro rail bullet train green bus all these comes to our mind then there are two developments which are also happening simultaneously one is that of uh, hyperloop yes another is your uh, delivery by drones so i would like to listen from you something on hyperloop what do you know about the hyperloop sir hyperloop is a vacuumless tube which connects two destinations that may be a very large long distance away so the advantage of travel in hyperloop is what is the technology based on which this hyperloop is being developed so it's magnetic levitation okay how does it work sir the uh, person that passenger will be in a pod and there will be a opposite magnetic field between the pod and the rail so because of that repulsive force the pod will float slightly above the rail and due to this travel at high speeds without friction will be possible and it will significantly reduce the commute time what is what is the distance it can cover in an hour sorry sir as of now no idea anyway has it uh, been tried anywhere in the world successfully sir as far as i am aware it is only been tried on an experimental basis and not proof full proof uh, where, where was it done in on experimental basis which country where sir i heard that in india it was proposed between mumbai and pune no, no, yes that's true that's for india but uh, what had happened initially before prior to that any idea 
सर एलन मस्क हैड प्रपोज इट बट आई एम नॉट श्योर वेयर एग्जैक्टली ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच चे योर इंटरव्यूज अवर यू मे गो नाउ थैंक्स Sit, yes. This is your second attempt at the interview, na? No? Yes. How was the performance last year? Sir, that time I got one seventy nine. One seventy nine. You should not be getting less than that. In, in fact, you should be getting more than what you got uh, last year. But you, you had not done well in your mechanical engineering about. You couldn't finally qualify. You, na? you missed by oh. how many marks? Ten, sir. Ten marks. The huge, huge. <laughs> Uh, this thing. How was your uh, performance this year in the written? Better, sir. Better. Yes. You have gone through the grill once, yes. so you know how exactly it happens in yes. the UPSC, Dholpur Aws. So nothing much to tell you, but still one or two things we would like to tell you. I appear to be very nervous. I don't know why. All along the interview, I could not see a trace of happiness on your face. Why it is so? Are you under pressure? Are you under any pressure to perform, or or what? What is the reason? Or it is just like that? Sir, after I couldn't answer some questions, uh, became slightly. This will always happen, na? Yes. It will sir. happen in life also. It's just an interview. Yes. You will have to face such kind of situation. Things will not go. You wish them to go, isn't it? Yes. But how you handle the situation, that is what is important. Yes. Against uh, adversity also, against odds, odds also. Yes. Isn't it? So, maintain a very smiling demeanor. You are yes. a very good personality, innocent face. Make best use of that. Yes. You'll, you are innocent. You look innocent also. So, civil services loves to have such uh, of officers in its cadre, isn't it? Yes. So, number one advice from our side is that keep a smiling face. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you are all along. You are appear, uh, appearing very nervous. Yes. And very low. So that should not happen. This is the biggest opportunity in your life. Yes. Make best use of that. Then your interview is uh, sometime next month only. Yes. A lot of time is there. So mechanical is your core. Uh, uh, engineering is your core subject. Yes. So prepare basics. The basics and fundamentals should be clear on mechanical engineering. Yes. And uh, that will help you. Yes. Then your mother uh, tongue is my uh, mother is from Telangana, I believe, na? Yes. So expect questions on Telangana also. Yes. It may may be asked. Then science and all that you said Chandrayaan and all that. Yes. There, 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 there you have to keep yourself uh, updated. So you have a lot of time. So keep yourself updated, and then uh, few situational questions you have to be really handled with care. Whenever you are faced with a situational question, it has to be very very diplomatic. Yes, isn't it? Without without uh, towing a particular line, unless you feel that yes, that line must be towed, and it, you are able to sail through that, take it forward convincingly. Otherwise, I don't think there is any problem as such. Your sitting style has to be proper. The way you are sitting right now is not proper. Yes. And you both the knees you should join. Yes. That that is better. Huh? Yes. It looks better. Yes. And uh, otherwise, you are a good material for the civil services. Yes. Anything you wish to ask us? Uh, sir, some of these controversial questions like Ukraine. So. Uh, Ukraine has started very well. India has taken a neutral view, and India is. Uh, To take a decision in its own larger interest and all that. Yes. Somewhere you went wayward, saying that India is supporting Russia and India should support Russia. Is officially India supporting Russia? No. Is a perception. Yes. So you can't be relying on perception. Yes. So official stand is very clear. So our the country's our honourable prime minister's interest or the country's interest is to see that war ends. Human suffering ends. Yes, isn't it? That is the only concern. That is what the is officially. Yes. So you maintain that stand. Yes. So there, that kind of a uh, uh, error you are not supposed to be committing. Yes. Because you uniformity in approach anywhere yes. in life also uniformity in approach is a must. Yes. You can't be wavering uh, here and there. Yes. So initially you said that was uh, absolutely all right. 
then somewhere you fumbled yes that should not happen yes other otherwise otherwise uh, if you take care of these issues i don't think there will be any problem in getting through yes the civil services it's not a very tough uh, interview you have faced it and you have scored 179 which is pretty good is pretty good also but you should try to uh, aim at 200 yes and you will get you are capable of getting that yes so all the best thank you sir thank you